Hey y'all, Coach Unify here, talking about the eclipse on April the 8th. And I know a lot of people is talking about the eclipse. And I wanted to come in and show you something that I've found, something that our Father in Heaven, hallowed be his name, is allowing me to see as far as the eclipse is concerned. And he is also allowing me to use Stellarium to show you. So let's get right into it. What I plan to do is show you what's hiding behind the eclipse. And then I'm going to show you some other related videos um, that can um, add some importance to it. I want to do, do it this way for uh, speed. I know a lot of people are anxious to hear about the eclipse and why there's so much excitement behind it. Now, you're looking here at the eclipse on April the 8th. If we were to zoom in, we see that the sun and the moon are about to converge there. Looks like the eclipse would be more like 3 o'clock in my area. And then it'll pass on. But let's play attention to the moon and what happens over the next couple of days here. The next day that the moon rises, or the next day that the sun rises, will be the 30th day of the month. That will be April the 9th. And then on that evening, we should see the sliver of the new moon at 2%, right at sunset. That will indicate the first day of the year. Now, some people may pay attention to Jupiter hanging around the moon. I'm not an expert on the matter. But what I wanted to show you is how on the evening of the first day, as the first day comes to a close, we see Pleiades, or as the Bible calls it, Kimmel come into the fact. Kimmel is the Hebrew name for Pleiades. And if we click on it and follow it, we see that the moon on the second day of the month, the second day of the year, the second day of the new Jubilee cycle, we have the moon and Kimmel together, which is one of the times when we can shoot for the moon. And even if we missed, we will land amongst the stars. So that's what I believe is hidden behind the eclipse. The eclipse itself is an indication of a lot of things, including the covenant, the X across America, and a lot of other signs, but I believe one that's missing is the star alignment of the sun, the earth, the moon, and Kimmel. The Great Awakening is a fifth dimensional thing. You become a spiritually minded person. And so, but once we sin, once we break the laws um, and separate ourselves from our father, it's like getting kicked out of the Garden of Eden all over again. And so it would have had to fall off. And so now, all these many years later, nobody would even remember, you know, how it happened, why it happened. They already remember is that it happened. Right. Yeah. But I believe it's about to happen again here in 2020. Oh, we have another awakening similar to that. But the thing about this time is we have also the opportunity for the marriage summit. Mm hmm. Well, that's something that we are expecting here in 2024, because what that will do is, you know, not only this great awakening, but that's going to be the doorway into the kingdom of heaven when you go through Passover in, um, in, in 2024. Our tabernacles will be extremely important, too. But I do not want to forget Rosh Hashanah, the true Rosh Hashanah, which is the first day of the first month, could and maybe will be the most important day out of this whole thing. That's when the stars align. Mm -hmm. You ever heard him say, shoot for the moon, and even if you miss, you end up amongst the stars? Right. Well, that only happens on certain times of the year. That will be during Tabernacles and Rosh Hashanah. Yeah. So during Tabernacles and during the Feast of Tabernacles on the full moon, if you were to look at the full, look toward the full moon, right behind the full moon would be Kimmel, which some people call Pleiades. Mm -hmm. Well, in the spring, of course, the constellation is not going to move. But in order to see it, it's not the full moon that we'll be looking at, but the new moon mm -hmm. that you'll have to look at in order to see Pleiades right. or Kimmel. Camel, 
which is the Hebrew name for it. And so that's one of the two times in a year that you can shoot for the moon and find yourself amongst the stars. The odd thing about it is that date doesn't even show up on a Jewish calendar at all. Not a holiday, not a day, nothing. Mm. Really? Yeah. Like if you look at the Jewish holiday calendar. As if they were trying to hide it. Well, they actually did hide it. Uh, not only do you not see it in here, but when you look for the head of the year, which that's what Rosh Hashanah means, they even put it on a whole nother day, the memorial blowing the trumpets, which mm. is not a day that you can shoot for the moon and find yourself amongst the stars. And it don't even mean Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah means head of the year, which is in the spring. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, they not only hit it, they pardon there, erased it. <laughs> it's gone. Right. You don't find no reference to the true date of Rosh Hashanah in any, anything. I don't tell you that one at all. Hmm. Hmm. I mean, even, and then if you're smart enough to say, hey, when is Rosh Hashanah? They're going to send you this. October and September. Right, right. I had the other part of the year. Yeah, that's not even New Year uh, on the secular calendar. Yeah, and like, and a lot of effort in order to hide this particular day. And I think that's why that day will be very significant. <laughs> if you know what I mean, because it yeah. took that time to, to hide it. And we're in 2024. And for those of you not familiar with the great book of true life, this is where the Third Testament is derived from. Yeah, the Third Testament is a collection of verses from the great book of true life. Yeah. Right. And when we come down to teaching 80, we see where her question comes from. Okay. You want to go ahead and read that? Okay. Oh, my people, I have poured upon you my happiness to hold and make you hear my word. I have made a feast day in this period of commemoration so that when you cease to hear my word, you will be prepared and that your reunions may be like a fraternal banquet of which will be attended by those who did not listen to this voice and will come seeking you. Now, so that's what she's talking about. It says right here that he has made a feast day in this period. Is that a new feast day or the same ones that we have? Well, what I decided to do was go down through this entire book looking for the word feast. And I believe it's in fact a new feast day. Hmm. A feast day that we haven't really heard of for most of us. This will be the first time we've ever heard of this new feast day in this video right here. There's actually a brand new feast day. <laughs> but so there's a new feast day that the father gave us within this um, current time that we're having now. And that's what it's saying here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to step down through these verses, looking at the times that it talks about this potential new feast day and what it's all about, when it is, who's supposed to be partaking in it, how we're supposed to be celebrating it. It's going to be a pretty healthy video because we have a lot of verses to go through, but I believe by the end of it, everybody will be pleasantly surprised by this new feast day. And like I said, this is a Bible study. So we're hoping that people will actually give their testimony because I believe we've already been participating in this feast day. Because he gave this a while ago and it's just new to us. During this period of commemoration. So this would have started since 1886. This reminded me of something we were talking about in a previous video about how the feast days came in waves. You might remember this chart we put up as it was talking about from the birth of the first human on the planet all the way up to the year 2024. And we talked about how it was during the first 2000 years we heard about feast days like Passover, Unleavened Bread, and even Pentecost. Mm -hmm. That was during a time up until Abraham. But we didn't hear about the other feasts like the Memorial Blowing the Trumpets or Atonement Day or the Feast of Tabernacles until after Moses' time and up until the Messiah's time. Mm -hmm. And then it was after the Messiah had came down and the second temple was destroyed, did we start hearing about this third wave of feast days, which included Hanukkah? Right. Mm -hmm. Well, so I started looking at this when I first got the comment 
and was trying to figure, okay, so when would this feast day be? Well, according to what we're looking at here, this feast day will start sometime either in this 11th month section, but I believe it's actually going to start over here when we make this next transition here, which will be around the year 2024. Okay. Like we said, this is a Bible study. So we're hoping that people will use the comment section to fill in some of the blanks we have on this. Mm -hmm. We don't have a full understanding. This is the first day that I've even ever even contemplated the idea of a brand new festival day. And I've only had a few hours to go through and find scripture to pull out. I didn't even read all of the scriptures. I just found ones that looked pertinent, made a list of them. And so we're going to step down through them and actually read them and see what this new festival day is all about. Okay. So we're over here at the Great Book of Life. Looking here at teaching 80, verse 1, which is the first one that we've already talked about. And what we're going to do is look down through the rest of this document, looking for the word feast, and just read what it says. Okay. And when my word is heard with all its purity and essence by the multitudes, they will exclaim, Truly the Holy Spirit poured the light upon us, and they will understand my teachings when I said, Man does not live by bread alone, but from every word that comes from God. So this is going to be the first hint as to what this feast day is about. Like I said, I've gone through and skimmed what it says. But where it's talking about here, and man does not live from bread alone, but from every word that comes from our Father, this is going to be a big hint. This this okay. is going to play. This is going to be a big one. So let's pay attention to this as we step through. Okay. All right. The next verse we're going to read is down in teaching 92 verse one. For you, it is a feast day when you listen to my word. Those of you who have faith generate yourselves and those who have doubts feel torment because you would like to see me as a man in order to have absolute certainty of my presence. So here it is talking about it's a feast day when we listen to his word. Okay. Well, the previous verse said, was talking about how we don't live by bread alone, but by every, every word. word. Mm -hmm. So we're already understanding or getting some understanding about what this new feast day is about. Is so far the two verses are saying it has something to do with his word, right? right. Mm -hmm. So let's come down here to teaching 126, verse 68. Vivify yourselves in me. Take my word. For if so, you won't be hungry again. Today you feast at the table. You taste my bread, and you always remember that the master sat his disciples at his table, conversed with them, and fed for an eternity. Once again, we see the word being used in this verse. We should be taking notes. You might want to go get your pencil and your piece of paper out already, because it's going to give more information about this feast day, but... Like we've seen three times in a row, this festival day has something to do with his word. Okay, let me ask you a question because I think because you've done the study, I don't know about this. Well, study. I skimmed it, but yeah. Is this feast day like all the rest of the feast days where we are supposed to come together? Well, you're getting a little <laughs> bit ahead of us here. Kind of yes, but kind of no. Like I okay. said, you're getting a little bit ahead of us, but let's finish this verse out. I have told you that when you call on me with your clean heart, I am with you. I have heard your prayer and therefore I have descended. See me with the eyes of faith that are the ones I have prepared. I am before you and I have credited you with my presence. Recognize me for the truth of my word. This is the lap from which you have turned away. But whenever the world takes you away from me, make an effort to return. And this loving bosom will always be open for you to enter. Now, notice this word return here. Right. This is going to be another hint. Okay. It has something to do with the word and something to do with our return. Not necessarily his return, but okay. our return. Okay. That was from teaching 126. This one is going to be from teaching 127, verse 25. See that you are not confused in understanding, but he comes to prove the perfection and truth of a law. I have brought you closer to the tree of life from whose branches the good fruits hang. Today there is a feast in my house. Many of you are at my table. So here it is talking about where this feast is. Where is his house at? Where is his house? Yeah, it says it's in his house. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. 
I don't know. I probably should know, but I don't. I can't think. Well, we know that it's a spiritual house, right? <laughs> right. I mean, when we did Passover, when we did Tabernacles, that was at our house. Mm -hmm. Our houses all over the world, we were kind of all spread out. But I think this goes towards your question earlier when you said, well, we're going to come together. Yes, we are going to come together, but we're going to come together in his house. Okay. All right. But who of those present would turn their back on me tomorrow? Only I know. So this is talking about how we have made this return. Some of us having eight of this festival will actually still walk away looking for another festival. And it tells us why. Okay. They, there's verses in here that's going to tell us why they're going to do this. We'll have an understanding on why there are some who will walk away. You mean by walk away, you mean to not believe that this is actually a true festival? Well, yeah, absolutely. You, 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 you're getting it. Yep. Okay. But let's go on to teaching 134, verse 58. Abolish the pain. The life created by me is not painful. Suffering comes from disobedience and faults of the children of God. Pain is typical of the life that men in their dissolution have created. Raise your gaze and discover the beauty of my works. Prepare yourselves to listen to the divine concert. Do not exclude yourselves of that feast. So it's this divine concert. Mm -hmm. So this is part of the festival. This is telling us how this is going to work. It's going to be a divine concert, not necessarily some guy in a long robe standing behind a pulpit telling mm -hmm. us this and telling us that. Mm -hmm. It says it's a divine concert concert mm -hmm. so it's a divine concert in his house mm -hmm. centered around his word that's what we're gathering so far that's what i have in my notes okay everybody should be taking notes on this because mm -hmm. like we said we hope you guys will help fill in what you gather out of this in the comment section this is a bible study right. so you guys are participants so we expect to see what you have to say down below right but go on if you isolate yourselves, how can you participate in that delight? You will live sad, tormented, and sick. This is it kind of reminds me of the Shepherd of Hermas, where mm -hmm. one of the groups, one of the people on the mountains were isolated. It talks about how they were vines that had that were growing up in the wild or something like that and mm -hmm. became unfruitful. Mm -hmm. So this feast is supposed to be about others. Not something we're doing isolated and alone, but it's supposed to be like a community thing. Mm, okay. I'm giving you guys the verses, you know, and even a link to this document so you can go on. And in your own studies, you can read some of these other verses that may be pertinent. See how down here in 59 is talking about uh, harmonious notes of this universal concert. So it goes on to talk about this concert. Matter of fact, it looks real interesting. Go ahead and read that. Okay. 59. I want you to be harmonious notes in the universal concert, that you understand that you have sprouted from the source of life, that you feel that in all consciousness is my light. Okay, so it's telling us about this this uh, universal this you know, concert. this divine concert is universal, saying that we are the notes in this concert, mm -hmm. which means that you know we're supposed to be sharing what it is we have. Right, so what, all can hear. All, yeah. Yeah. And we can share information because nobody has all of the truth, you know, and we only have bits and pieces of the truth. Right. And so we have to bring what we have to the table so that we can complete this song. Mm, right? If, mm -hmm. All right, the next verse is coming out of Teaching 138 and verse 60. Come to me to the feast that your father has prepared for you so that you can take the lessons that correspond to you and that form your inheritance. All right. So this festival is about his lessons, which would be the word that we talked about. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's go to lesson 140, verse 30. Okay. Verse 30. It is necessary that the one who has sinned enter the temple and their repentant attend the feast of divine love. So here it is. We're hearing about this return again. Yeah. And so, and which we talked about earlier, but now it's kind of giving it a name here and it's going to be a couple of names, but they're all going to be 
kind of related. And I believe we can paint a picture of what this festival day will be called. So okay. we can write this one down, Divine Love. Feast of Divine Love. But this verse is more so talking about the one who has sinned and, they, and how they have to enter the temple and be repentant before or during or something like that. They attend this feast. It's the feast of divine love. Okay. Now, when it says the one who has sinned into the temple and they'll repent, what is, does it mean by enter the temple? Well, if you remember from the epistle of Barnabas that we once we have been baptized and keep the feast of Passover, we regain that purity that we had in the Garden of Eden and then are allowed to be vessels of the third temple. In okay. other words, we make ourselves clean enough for him to come and dwell within us, Okay, which is another strong hint as to what this festival is all about okay it's related to the third temple all right all right the next verse will be from teaching 144 verse 73 okay have you imagined what the feast will be like for the spirit that returns to the heavenly father's house how will the kiss with which the father receives his son and the joy of the beings that inhabit that mansion. So again, we're hearing about his house mm -hmm. and us returning to his house. Mm -hmm. Of course, his house will be related to the temple that we're hearing about. One thing that strikes me is it says the feast, not the feast with the S. So this let us know that it's talking about one specific feast. It's talking about one specific feast mm -hmm. here, the, the, the feast of the divine love that we've gotten so far mm -hmm. but it's going to give a lot more information about this festival but if you will go ahead and read verse 74 do not stop on the right path come for it humanity and do not turn back your sight until you reach the great door where i will be waiting to receive you so this is kind of going what we heard about earlier how there would be some who will turn back right right so we're told here to keep going until we get to this festival. Mm -hmm. And we'll learn later that we have to eat of the fruit of this festival. Right. It's saying that you are on the right path, so don't stop, but continue on it. All right. The next verse will be coming out of teaching 145, verse 71. For now all feel my caress, my love, and my peace. Because you have come to the spiritual feast at the master's house. And just it is that all of you get to savor the delicacies of forgiveness and love of your father. So here we're learning that it's a spiritual feast. feast. Yeah. Now yeah. that's big. Yeah. You mentioned that before, but now it's in writing. Yeah. It is a spiritual feast. Well, I might have gotten it intuitively. But yeah, like you said, we are seeing it in scripture here. Mm -hmm. um, and it's also talking about what the festival delicacies will be, uh, forgiveness and love of the father. So that yeah. will be our, what we will be feasting on. So that, um, makes sense when it calls it the divine love, the divine love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I'm hoping people will give their testimony because I believe I may have experienced something like this. Okay. When I first started reading the Third Testament of the Bible, mm -hmm. uh, kind of thought I was going through some type of, I don't know, I can't explain what it was, but it definitely felt like a spiritual event. It felt like, you know, something that he was doing, but it was all centered around reading that word when I was reading that scripture. Mm -hmm. Very life changing experience back in 2018 when I first heard about and started reading the third testament so i think that may have something to do with it but you guys y'all let us know what you what you have experienced in the comment section all right the next verse that we're going to look at is verse 19 from teaching 183 okay as spirits endowed with enlightenment and power you were ordered to incarnate on earth to fulfill your mission your brethren have rejected you because of the graces that you possess. They have been unable to comprehend the faith and trust that you have in God. 
and they do not realize that I protect and take care of all of my children in the same manner. I am very close to those who have come before me having repented of their sins. Through your repentance, you have become worthy of taking my presence of love and charity to those who are ill and in spiritual poverty. Your faith will manifest itself and offer strength to those who have become weak, helping them to arise to a new life. Many of my prodigal children will come to my sanctuary during this era, and I will prepare a feast to celebrate their return. So here we're learning who it is that is returning to this feast. The prodigal children the prod of the father. The mm -hmm. prodigal children is reminds us of the prodigal son parable we read in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Well, this is talking about us now. Mm -hmm. As we return to him, return to his laws, return to his teachings and his instructions, mm -hmm. we the one of the first things that we'll do is partake in this feast. And that's based on my own testimony. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, back in 2018, I believe that I experienced this festival for the first time a spiritual festival spiritual a spiritual festival um being a prodigal son returning to his commandments returning back to his laws and stuff um i believe that's what this is talking about i believe that's true because you know not only were you quote walking around crying and mm -hmm. and you know having your your it was like you were just so full of you know whatever you were reading but your whole um demeanor of love and helping others change yeah i remember the biggest thing was realizing that he loves everybody right mm -hmm. that was something that we hadn't been taught and you know we we were taught that you know he was going to kill the sinners and you mm -hmm. know it, and when it hit home that he had love for all of his people, mm -hmm. the sinners included, right. that really touched my heart and it still does today. Mm -hmm. But anyway, let's go on. The Israelite family will continue to pray so that my other lost children will return back to the father. There we see the word return again. Return again, but it's also talking about how we're not supposed to be isolated. Mm -hmm. So once we experience this festival, we have to share this with the others, mm -hmm. right? All right, the next verse will come out of teaching 187, verse 1. Come sit on the table of the divine master to eat the bread of eternal life. The angels have prepared the feast, and the Father welcomes everyone. So the angels are the ones who are preparing this festival. Okay. It might be why we are so unfamiliar with it is because they're doing it behind the scenes. And because it's spiritual. Yeah. Okay. Eat and drink. And learn to appreciate this nourishment. So we, this is important here. Mm -hmm. We have to learn to appreciate this nourishment. Mm -hmm. You know, we've come to look forward to the Passover lamb. Right. Even the wine that we drink during Passover. Mm -hmm. um, and the other nourishments of the other festival days. But this one is different. Right. This one is prepared by the angels. I think this was, and I don't know quite yet what it is. But when you start talking about spiritual, it's sort of sometimes, you know, we want to say, I can't do that. But what do you mean? Well, because you're not thinking on the spiritual level. Oh, we can't do that. We can't perform this right. festival. Mm -hmm. Well, we see the angels are the ones that are preparing it. So I right. guess we don't have to worry about it. Right. Mm -hmm. We can just be ready to take our place. But like we said, we have to learn to appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And that reminds me of how we have to give the angels credit for what they're doing to help us. Right. We don't. Yeah. The Third Testament tells us that we uh, would weep if we knew all the things that they are doing behind the scenes just to help us try to make it through. Yeah, I often remind myself of how I used to ride around on ball headed tires on my car. <laughs> and I would imagine, you know, there was an angel down there wrapped around the wheel of this car, making sure it didn't blow out on me. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that you wasn't know. too long ago. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do not imitate those who sit at my table to eat and drink and then depart without ever realizing who was with them wow yeah so and i might have done this yeah you know i'm we, sure we all have yeah and not realizing that this was actually going on so that's what makes this class important i guess mm -hmm. is so we don't do this so we don't you know have a spiritual moment 
and believed that it was just isolated to us and just, you know, something that came and went. No, this is everybody. Mm -hmm. And we have to share with them so that everybody can partake on it. At least those of us prodigal sons who are returning right. to his house. Right. Let's leave, Let's look at verse two. The bread that I have come to offer you today is the same one that I brought you in the second era. Seek the essence in both and you will discover that each contains my divine love. So and that's why I'm telling you guys, you know, giving you links to this book and telling you the teaching so you can go on and look at some of these other verses. They're definitely going to be related. Mm -hmm. But for the sake of time, we're just going to look at the ones that actually mention the word feast, at least most of them. And but you guys share what you find down below because we're definitely going to miss something. I think we're going to get the big picture, though. So let's drop down to teaching 191 and look at verse 12. My manifestations during this era has lasted longer than three years. It was necessary to manifest myself for a longer period so that I could explain my teachings in different ways, thus helping you to comprehend it. So he's he's been manifesting since 1884 mm -hmm. when the Third Testament actually all oh, these teachings that we're reading here started coming down. Of course, the Third Testament came after this. Right. But these teachings that we're reading here actually started coming down in 1884. Right. Frequently, some of my disciples have rejected me and have departed from the true path, even though they initially believed in me and loved me. Yeah, because it's not what they thought it was supposed to be. Well, they were looking and still are looking for a man. Yes, a lot of people are looking for some type of humanoid manifestation of the return of our Messiah. When we learn even in the book of Revelation that he said that he will return as the word of God. Mm -hmm. And so just like before, he's coming in a manner that's too humble for them to appreciate right you know like like just like before they thought that he was supposed to come back as a king mm -hmm. killing all of his enemies and stuff and mm -hmm. when he didn't when he came back as a poor individual who was just spreading love around they rejected him well that's the same case now where we've been taught that he's coming back uh, cracking the sky with ten thousands of his angels, mm -hmm. you know, annihilating all of the wicked off of the planet. Mm -hmm. When in fact he actually returned as the Word of God, and people just think that you know that was just too humble. It can't be him, and so they're going off to look for something else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Although they received manifestations and evidence of my truth, they chose not to follow the true path. Whenever man finds himself in the abyss. He will then repent and weep, asking for my help. Since I am love and have infinite patience, I will help him arise from that abyss so that he can return to me. Now, see, this is talking about, you know, those same people who have or are rejecting the word as being the return. Well, they're only going to see and believe that he has returned when we have the great earthquake. Mm -hmm. When every building is shaken down, then they'll say, oh, well, He's definitely returned now. And so then they'll get it. And this is when he'll be waiting for them. Mm -hmm. This is why you have the 144,000 and the multitude that no man can number mm -hmm. already prepared for that day because they already know how he's coming. They already are preparing under his return while the rest of the world is waiting for the sky to crack or they're waiting for the earthquake or they're waiting for the trumpets to blow or the vials to be poured out and all of that bad stuff to happen before they realize that we are in the great day of the Lord. Right. I will sit him at my table as the prodigal son. I will make a feast to celebrate his return and he rejoices. So again, we're hearing about this prodigal son. Right. So the majority of the people, like we said, they're not going to be ready to accept his return until the earth is humbled until they themselves are humbled and all of their material possessions are taken away so we would call these people the prodigal sons as people who are rebels well yeah, and that would include all of us these right. people are all of us um it's just that some of us return faster than others mm. but there are still those that are out there seeking after the false prophet Mm -hmm. they're, they're seeking after those who will tell them lies and, you know, keep their ears itching and tingling or whatever, uh, avoiding the truth and avoiding who our father truly is. Well, their return is coming too. they're, they're going to be forced to return 
too bad it's just going to take a lot of destruction for them to be convinced of it. Yeah, because over, you know, over and over again in the Third Testament, you know, we hear that the Father said that he's not going to lose not one of us. Not one of us will be lost in this. Right. Mm -hmm. Everyone believes that the disciple has truly repented except the divine master. Is that what you're doing? What, well, yeah, it's talking about us. You know, we, we maybe we all think that we have repented. Oh, we, okay. We're the disciple, mm -hmm. and maybe we think that we have fully repented, mm -hmm. except our master. He knows that, you know, right, right, maybe right. that's what it's saying. With time, the disciple, again, yields to temptation. So, yeah. Frequently, I have seen many disciples fall, arise, and return to me. My manifestation, this era, has lasted until 1950, so that you can return to the true path after departing from it many times. Then you will have acquired true spiritual strength. Yeah, so this is talking about the Third Testament, how it was completed, um, or these teachings that we're reading here were all finished up in 1950, mm -hmm. but we're still waiting around for the catastrophic events to take place. Okay. But until then, we're given some time. And this time is talking about this is the half hour of silence here. Mm -hmm. This that silence period would have started closer to about 1974 or 1975. But that half hour is a jubilee cycle, about 49 years in which we're given the chance to repent, to come back to him, to learn his ways, to actually get back to where we're supposed to be before the destruction of the earth occurs. And, you know, like I said, people want to lose their homes. They're going to lose their their all of their luxuries mm -hmm. and they're not going to really know how to survive in this new environment. Well, you'll have those who since 1950 have been learning to live according to the biblical ways. There will be the 144,000 and the multitude that no man can number that will emerge to teach the rest of humanity how to survive under this new paradigm, under this new way of doing things. Mm hmm. All right, the next verse that we'll look at is down in teaching at 217 and verse 40. If you truly prepare yourselves, you will be the tree, the fountain, and the table for the feast that welcomes all the prodigal sons who were absent from the father's house. So this again is talking about how it's up to us to share this. Mm -hmm. Now the angels are preparing it, mm -hmm. but you know, e, e equals MC squared tells us that they, they have no mortal force. They can't really do the work. Mm -hmm. That's where we come in mm -hmm. and we have to be the ones who actually, I guess, serve up mm -hmm. the food. Mm -hmm. oh, the thing about it, what it's telling us here is that we have to be prepared. Right. And we learn in the third Testament that preparation has to do with reading the word, yeah. being charitable, mm -hmm. and loving each other. Right. Mm -hmm. You just can't walk into it and think you're going to start, I guess, serving the food immediately. You have to have... Um, Obedience to yeah. the law. Mm -hmm. We have to be in keeping the law the whole time. And, and that's all in the preparation process to, to get us ready to be these servants, mm -hmm. to welcome in these prodigal sons. Right. Mm -hmm. And we have the testimony that we too were prodigal too. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so he has this all planned out. All right. The next verse we'll look at is 62 coming out of teaching 224. Okay. Eat rich and poor because this banquet will cost you nothing, but you must mix with each other so that the true joy reigns in this feast. So we have to mix together. And I guess it's saying that the rich have to mix with the poor here. Mm -hmm. Again, pointing us back to the shepherd of Hermes, mm -hmm. who says that those two are necessary. Yeah, they the, need each other. The, the rich need the poor and the poor need the rich. Right. And, and so it's telling us that at this particular feast, we are to commingle together. Mm hmm. This has not always been the case at many of the feast days right? because, you know, you have those, you have the ones that have, and then you have the have nots and they've always been kind of separated doing their own thing. Well, you have the ones who have the big nice tent and then you have the one who has the Walmart Ozark trail tent. <laughs> uh, well, the one, the one got the Walmart tent, the other one got an RV. Right. Yeah. Right. And they ain't in the same park. <laughs> You know, you know, my my way of roughing it ain't, may not be your way of roughing it. You know, your booth ain't don't look like my booth. Well, 
the exhaust from your booth may be, you know, smoking <laughs> our little tin up over here. But, you know, now we have to, to mix together here. Right. And this spiritual feast. But then look at verse 63. Come hear this word because soon you will no longer hear it. This is pointing back to what we read in the last one. We're talking about 1950. Mm -hmm. How up until 1950, people were getting this information um, directly. Mm -hmm. That's why there were so many prophets back in that time that mm -hmm. was born before 1950. Uh, what was the big guy's name? Uh, Bill, what was his name? Oh, Billy Graham. Billy Graham, yeah, people like that that were born before 1950, they were getting this information directly. Yeah, well, around that time you were hearing, you know, there were revivals all over the place, uh, things like that were happening. William Miller and all of these organizations kept mm -hmm. popping up, you know, the Seven Day of Venice and the Jehovah Witnesses. Well, that was during that time before 1950. Well, after 1950, it ceased. There mm -hmm. have been no prophets since 1950. Okay, some people will agree well, with you, especially. Hey, they disagreeing with the word. They ain't disagreeing with me. I don't care what you say about me. They disagreeing with the word. There have been no prophets since 1950. You know, you the Reverend Pap. You hmm? have a hard time uh, taking these prophet and prophecies titles from a lot of well, people. Well, <laughs> brother, Reverend Pastor, Deacon Dr. Doug didn't. All he had to do was stick prophet on the end of the prophet, Reverend Pastor, Deacon Dr. Doug. You know, it's. He can still do it, but, you know, <laughs> it's the scripture that he's disagreeing with. I, I don't have a dog in a fight. I just read the Bible. I don't prophesy it. And the next scripture that we're going to read is going to come out of verse 46 in teaching 233. Verse 46 says, I will prepare for that day a feast for those who live on earth and those great multitudes of spirits that live in the hereafter. Now, this one here, we may have should have read the previous verse. Matter of fact, go ahead and read that one. Okay. This is verse 45. While some present themselves in spirit because they could not come together with their matter, others present me only to their body since their spirit is far away. Engaged in materiality, and I have told you that to hear me, it is necessary to prepare. But I want my light, my spiritual manna to descend wherever my children are. So it was talking about this spiritual manner here mm -hmm. and how it is necessary to us for us to prepare, prepare for that day. Mm -hmm. I will prepare for that day a feast for those who live on earth and those great multitudes of spirits that live in the hereafter. Right. Right. And again, it's talking about the return here. And this was talking about the spiritual return up there in 45 is talking about how our spirit was far away, mm -hmm. how we were detached from it. Mm -hmm. And we should recognize that, you know, it is sin that actually does this to us. Right. Creates a barrier between us and our spirit. Right. All right. So let's come down to 236 verse 55. I know that those who have suffered and struggled to demonstrate my doctrine with complete clarity are crying at this moment when they hear these words. They ask me for forgiveness and strength to continue in the gap, and I give everyone forgiveness, strength, and light. I bless the humble, but those who are not, I say, be humble. Do not forget that I have compared you with the prodigal son of my parable, who after squandering his inheritance far from his father's house, when he saw his empty hands and his exalted and naked body, he returned home in search of his father's arm. He received him and made a feast for the happiness of having his son back with him. So this is a feast for the prodigal son. So that's the who. Mm -hmm. Then that son became humble, obedient and loving toward his father because the pain of his faults had made light in his heart. But to you, whom I have said that I have received in this time like the prodigal son, do you think it is fair that after having feasted upon your arrival, having sat down to my table and having showered yourselves with graces, will you fill yourself with vanity and rule over my house? So this is talking about humility here, mm -hmm. you know, and how important it is to be humble. Right. Um, this we, we read about this so much in the Third Testament, how ne absolutely necessary it is to be humble in all it is. So we were out there, we were sinners, and then we've come back to 
our father's house, enjoying this feast. Is it fair now that we're going to become arrogant again now mm -hmm. that we are here when we're supposed to be sharing with our brother? Are we going to stand over them once again and, you know, be arrogant? No. I think, you know, one of the, you know, you're talking about your testimony, but, you know, one of the things that I can say that happened when you started reading the test, the third testament is that um, you became a more humble person. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you wasn't at first. No, I, well, I didn't know. I didn't know I was supposed to be, you know, not only did I not know I was supposed to be, you know, I didn't I didn't see a reason to be, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, but now I understand how absolutely necessary it is. Even our Messiah had to be a clear demonstration of humility, even though he had all power and he could do everything and anything. He had to be one of the most humble people walking around. That's an absolute part of what we're doing here. So right. let's come down to teaching 235 and look at verse 47. You call them to this feast of love and forgiveness so that in my presence they feel the love they were looking for and that they never felt or found among men. Verse 46 says, Among the crowds that listen to my word are those women of whom I have spoken. So it's talking about women here. Mm -hmm. My hand has protected from your gazes and your judgments because I have also seated them in the great banquet of the Spirit. So this is talking about the return of the woman here? What is it saying? I think it may, maybe possibly is saying that, you know, a lot of times when we read and discern scripture, and rightfully so, scripture is stated that, you know, the women are left out. So this might be saying that, you know, for those who, have, who say that the women can't be a part of this spiritual feast that, Maybe he's saying that they can. Yeah. In the Old Testament, it said that the men were required to come to the festivals. So I could imagine a lot of times the women wouldn't make that long trek down to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. You know, they would stay behind. Well, this time they are expected to show up, too. Mm -hmm. You know, especially considering that they're um, they are actually supposed to make a transition here at the end of this curse. Once this curse is over then, you know, they're expected to be more of our sisters on the same level with us. Well, to get there, they're going to have to start participating in this feast with us. Yeah, you know, you know in the book, I think it's Samuel, where um, his mother, remember, she stayed behind and she didn't go back with them when they went to the feast. Remember, she said that she would present Samuel to the father um, the next feast and and so, the, uh, like you said, some of the women probably did not even show up. Yeah, well, you got to show up now. <laughs> Praise the Father in heaven. The angels are preparing a feast this time. So, yeah. So notice the name here. You called them to this feast of love and forgiveness. Right. And we've seen this before, how this feast is about love and forgiveness before. I called it the feast of divine love. Mm hmm. It says, so that in my presence, they feel the love that were they were looking for, that they never felt a found among men. So it's definitely something spiritual. Okay. All right. The next verse we'll look at is coming out of 233 and verse 55. I do not want you to be traditionalists. But it is my will that you remember all those events through which I manifested with you and gave you examples and teachings. Make my remembrance a feast within your heart and your steps will be firmer on the path. So this is pointing to the spiritual nature of this feast. This will be a feast within our hearts. Mm -hmm. And there's other scripture here. We're not going to talk about them in this class here. But there was ones who talked about how. Even the traditional feast will be changed. To one day be a spiritual one? To be more spiritual in that there will be more about contemplation. Okay. Like, for instance, when you look at Leviticus 23, it gives you the basics of the festival. Mm -hmm. Like, for instance, it says this is Passover. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't really tell us what we're supposed to do on Passover. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, we went in and dug in and found out some of the traditions of Passover. Um, but Leviticus 23 doesn't go into that. Right. Well... 
this great book of life as it talks about some of those festivals it doesn't really speak on the traditional parts of them it just reminds us of those days and it kind of implies that when we do them going forward when we start partaking in this new feast that we're talking about here those days will be days of reflection mm, instead okay. of days of action with ceremonies and rites and all of this other stuff going on mm -hmm. it'll be a day where we just you know enjoy the time with our father mm -hmm. But anyway, we'll cover that in another video. And this one, we're going to go down to teaching 242 and look at verse 61. Okay. Humanity is preparing for when those times of light come. You, when you sit in the middle of the trial, do not despair or less to blaspheme, pray, watch, and resist. Blasphemy, denial, imprecations against my justice will start from the mouth of the ignorant, whom you will forgive and teach to rise. When silence falls in the midst of man's despair, you will speak and you will be heard. Then you will see how those who have distanced themselves from me so much and offended me by their repentance will be forgiven like the prodigal son in the parable. But then you will not be surprised to see that instead of punishment, on them was forgiveness and caress. So this is, th this is talking about the great day of... The Lord this is talking about the apocalyptic events mm. and how there will be those who, like we read in the book of Revelation, they're mm -hmm. going to blame our father for those mm -hmm. things. And, you know, it's not his fault. He just told us about them. Mm -hmm. Before you will cry with joy as you contemplate the feast of peace and love in the world. So here we're saying that it's the feast of peace, peace and, and love, love mm -hmm. that, you know, once these people realize that it's our father who's trying to save us from all of this stuff that's going on and they return that, you know, they will be partakers in this feast. All right. The next verse that we're going to look at is coming out of teaching 258 and verse 13. For those who have come with spirituality, my presence through this word is a true feast of light. Where the best delicacies of the spiritual realm are offered to the need of those hungry for love, justice, wisdom, and peace. They will not be able to stray from my path and will know how to receive the world's goods in addition. Yeah, so this is a true feast of light. Which we know means knowledge. Which we know means knowledge. Right. And this knowledge, it says, best delicacies of the spiritual realm. Mm -hmm. which we've talked about before being prepared by the angels are offered to the need of those hungry for love, justice, wisdom, and peace. Right. All right. Looking down here in 274 and verse 41. In them, the victor is matter and the vanquished is the spirit. It is these lost whom I will come to invite to the feast of the spirit, to the banquet of love, for my heavenly table awaits everyone to free them from such bitterness and of so much loneliness. This is the feast of the spirit, mm -hmm. a banquet of love. But look at verse 42. I will give you my delicacies, bread, fruits, wine, and honey, which translated into the real sense are tenderness, consolation, peace, health, and knowledge. Wow. That's that's big. Yeah, that's deep there. <laughs> that's a whole lot. Another class. Yeah. Too. <laughs> Absolutely. And we may do another class on that. Or maybe somebody will give us a class on it in the comment section. But we're going to drop down to verse 48 out of teaching 327. The perfect happiness of the Father and of you will be the great day of the Lord. The universal feast will be when all of you feed at his table with the bread of eternal life. So now this is real interesting here because it's talking about the great day of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Now we understand that judgment day is a thousand year period. That day is a thousand years. And so judgment day lasts for a while, but this great day of the Lord seems to be different here. And it's maybe talking about a shorter event, mm -hmm. but we're always associated this with the destruction of the world as we know it. Right. But then he says the universal feast will be when all of you feed at his table with the bread of eternal life. So this is associating or attaching this festival with the great day of the Lord. Is that the time in which it starts or is that the time in which everybody will be unified at this feast? Yeah. Because what we've learned is that it started somewhere around 18 
1866 or 1884, maybe coming to some type of head there in 1950 or 1975, but then maybe around 2024 is when everybody, or at least our father's people, will be partaking in this festival, and that's when you know we'll have the big, big celebrations or something like that. Yeah, it sounds like it's um, talking about when um, when all of us come together. Okay. All right. So, because like we said, is part of our testimony, we've experienced it on individual levels. Uh, some people in this year, some people in another year. But I believe here, like you said, it's talking about when we all partake in that festival. Let's look at verse 14 out of teaching 63. Okay. I have prepared the table and I have invited you to my banquet. But I say to you that later it shall be you who will prepare the table to receive your brethren, thus prolonging to eternity this feast of brotherhood and love. So now we've been hearing that the angels are supposed to prepare this festival. Right. But now we're saying that we will have to one day. It's as if the angels are going to hand it over to us. Yeah, maybe. And maybe it'll be up to us as we have learned mm. what this is all about mm -hmm. and how this all works. That, you know, one day we will be inviting others to come in and partake of this festival. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In this third era, your spirit shall fulfill his destiny of teaching your brethren and sharing with them all he has received from my charity. So we're gaining this information ourselves, understanding that we're going to have to share it one day. Right. Well, it's something like what the angels did, you know, in the first era where they actually came down and taught the people, um, you know, taught Moses them about the, the, the different feasts. And then they were expected to to do them themselves. So this is talking about the role of the 144,000 mm -hmm. and the multitude and no man can number mm -hmm. how they'll be expected to teach the rest of us what it is we need to know. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's all making sense. All right, the next verse we're going to look at is 77 out of teaching 345. Okay. There will then be your endless lands. There will be your labor waiting for you. There will be the day without night work without fatigue, and come back without death. There will be a feast for your spirit, a feast of love and redemption. Yeah, so we're hearing a lot about this this feast here mm -hmm. um, and what it's all about. Yeah. Now, we've just went over verse 77 out of teaching 345. But let's come up here and look at what 76 happens to say. Okay. You two... As disciples of this work, like the 144,000 mark, like spiritual Israel, doctrine by the Father in all times, you will have the great obligation to get up with your great book of spiritual wisdom, with your banner of peace, union, and goodwill, with your weapons of justice, with your gifts of revelation, of prophecy, of intuition, of analysis, of studying my word, to say to humanity. This is the work of the Father. So, like we were saying down here in 77, it talks about how there will then be your endless lands. There will be your labor waiting for you. So, this is the labor here to share this information. The mm -hmm. Third Testament of the Bible. Mm -hmm. Bringing them into this festival. Right. Mm -hmm. This is true spiritualism. And this is the way to deliver truth. It is the worship of the practice that the Father has come to teach as the Holy Spirit. So this is the work. So this is the festival. This is the marriage supper. This is mm -hmm. the feast that we've been talking about. This is the work of the 144,000. So this feast could be called the feast of the 144,000. I mean, the name that it gave it was the feast of the divine love. But the feast of divine love is actually the feast of the 144,000. Yeah, talking about the works that they have to do. This is what the scripture has been talking about, how we have to share this with our brothers. Mm -hmm. Okay, verse 10 says, At the conclusions of my lesson among you, you will have to prepare to spread this seed throughout the people of the earth. With that seed, you will greatly help your brothers in the critical moments of their awakening. So 
here, the critical moments of their awakening, like we were talking about, is the day of the Lord. Mm -hmm. That's when they're going to wake up. Right. And it'll be up to the 144,000 and the multitude that no man can number that will have the responsibility of sharing this information that we're learning from the Third Testament mm -hmm. and the great book of true life. Right. Mm -hmm. They, before the certainty of their presence, before the reality of my message, will prepare to receive me in a spiritual way. And as well as among you, I manifested and poured myself out according to the preparations of each congregation and each spokesman in the same way I will pour out in those according to the spirituality of each people and the preparation that is in their congregations. So this preparation of the congregation is the responsibility. Right. Is this new festival. Mm -hmm. It is a spiritual banquet that many of us have already partaken in but will now have the responsibility of sharing with the rest of the world after the world is humbled, after the calamities come on the world and they're ready to hear it. The way it was prepared for us by the angels, we will now have to prepare it for them, at least the ones that our father presents to us, helping them to understand this new spirituality. Right. This is now the time for the 144,000 and the multitude to be preparing to absolutely be preparing yep learning this third testament of the bible getting this information so that when the rest of the world is ready to hear it then we'll be ready to share with them we'll have the knowledge have lived it like it says we'll have experienced what it says and try it out how it is that we're supposed to control the elements and control our thoughts and speak telepathically to our brothers and mm -hmm. have spirit to spirit communication and all kinds of things that we're learning now in a time of peace. Right. We'll be ready to share it with them. Like it says in their most critical moments when they need it the most. Can we say now is not the time to be concerned if they want to hear it or not? Absolutely. A lot of people, you know, they, send in um, comments and questions that their family are not hearing these messages. And that's a great point. Now is the, not the time to try to be telling them they're not ready to hear it. As long as they have televisions and cell phones mm -hmm. and uh, other Conflict. distractions mm -hmm. and preoccupations and all of that, they're not going to hear um, our father or anything he has to say. That right. stuff has to be stripped from them first, just like it was for us. It has to be removed from them first, and then they will be willing to hear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In the meantime, like you said, we are preparing ourselves for that role so that when we have the opportunity to shine, like the book of Daniel chapter 12 talks about, we will be ready and prepared to do just that. Right. So you guys let us know what you think in the comment section. Mm -hmm. This is been a very educational class for both of us right. and hopefully you learned something as well yep if you did let us know we'll see you in the comments shalawama